Hey, my worthy viewers. Today I'm bringing to you a movie that is uh, available to see on Stars if you got Stars, but uh, something that you can also rent. It's a sequel to one of the cult classics from Mr. Danny Boyle. This one's called, which I have an issue with, it's called P2 Train Spotting. And here with me to chat about it is Mr. Video Store Reject himself, Cody House. Take it away, Cody. Hey, Justin. Thanks for having me. Yes. Uh... Not the best movie called T2, but T2 Train Spotting 2 is Danny Boyle returning to basically the movie that kind of made him a big name director. Train Spotting was one of those films that was like a big push in the 90s independent boom. And not only that, this reunites him with uh, his leading man, Ewan McGregor, who was in his first three films. And then they had a falling out over the studio and them going with Leonardo DiCaprio in the lead of the beach instead of Ewan McGregor. And then they never worked together again until this project. And uh, yeah, it's loosely based off the book from the same writer that train spotting was based off of. I think the book's called porno, but the book was written in 2002. So I'm not sure how close this one is to the book because obviously they had to adjust it to the actor's ages because this is 20 years after the events of train spotting and just kind of where they are in their lives. So what's the same, what's the difference? Um, it's got most of the same people from the first film. I was surprised they got like Kelly McDonald to come in and do like one scene in the movie. And um, this movie came out and then like not a lot of people saw it. And then it was like not readily available to watch that easily. So I never got around to watching this movie. Of course, I hadn't seen the first train spotting movie since I was a teenager till like a month or two ago because... A podcast I like to listen to called Blank Check does director's filmographies, and right now they're doing the movies of Danny Boyle. And this is the next one they're doing for this week's episode. And it's not as good as the first movie, but for a movie that's a sequel, like this sort of thing, that didn't need to happen, it's pretty good for what it is. Uh, why did I? Sorry, no, I muted. Sorry. Uh, okay, I was... that was one of the the things that I heard a lot when the, the movie came out. T two Train Spotting was, first of all, it shouldn't be called T two, but then also, uh, it's uh, it just wasn't necessary. It was like the first one was so good, and it, it kind of ended as it should have. Like, what's gonna what's gonna happen, and why does it need to happen? But. Um, yeah, this is 20 years after the original movie. Um, Ewan returns to Scotland and reunites with his old friends. Um, one who's not really a, the friend anymore, right? He's We have a guy, he's in a prison and he escapes and he goes um, uh, back oh, to Oh, Robert family. Carlyle, which yeah. he never really was their friend. He was just that older guy they hung out with who had connections. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, he basically ends up going to prison over the supposed drug deal they try to make in the original movie. And, of course, Ewan McGregor runs off with most of the money that they made off that deal and leaves Scotland to try and get clean. And then this is him coming back. And then, yeah, it's bringing back all the characters from the first movie, Johnny Lee Miller. And I forget the actor who plays the other guy. There's a... Um, Yes, him, which he has a puke gag in this movie because in the original one there oh was like God. a diarrhea gag. Oh my God, I I laughed so hard. It's a crazy scene because he's like committing suicide, and then <laughs> Ewan sees him and tries to save him, and then he just throws up in the bag. Uh, just like so disgusting. But that the first one is like that too. The first one. To me, it was is more raw. It, it you know, it, it's it's punk rock. This this yes. isn't you know, this is uh, more modern. 
but they still try to do some of the old gags from the first. You know, they do revisit some of the places that they did in the first one. Yep, there's um, a toilet shot. There's a toilet shot of that toilet from the first movie. And they even yeah. show some scenes from the first movie. And yeah, yeah it, absolutely. It's it's a it's a well-made like version. You you called it punk rock the first one, which is very much the energy. So it's like your favorite band from your twenties got back together to do a reunion tour in their forties or fifties. Is yeah. what this movie is. And, and and nobody's changed. Nobody has changed. Like yeah, people have gotten clean, but or still are trying to get clean. Uh, uh, they're still thieves. They're still thieving people and, and scamming people, um, which is exactly what they were doing in the first. And then, you know, like even the the ones that are clean, they still go back and do you know the the drugs and stuff. And it's like you seriously just never freaking learn. I mean, well, yeah, I know, think Johnny Lee Miller's character, yeah, he's not doing heroin anymore, but I think he's still like doing cocaine and coke. Yeah, yeah. Um. Yeah. Uh. And yeah, there. It's 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 the punk rockers that you knew and loved that's still trying to be punk rock, but they're definitely like too old to do it, you know. But um. Yeah, Danny Boyle uh is such a chameleon when it comes to directing. You don't yeah. really know. I just looked over his filmography right now, and I'm like, I didn't know that was him. Yeah, I think he's very much attuned to, like, a Ridley Scott, though I think he hasn't had as many bad movies as Ridley Scott has, because he hasn't directed as many, but, like, if you look at Danny Boyle's first four movies, you can see a very distinctive style in his directing, but it looks like he adjusted it once, like, a couple of his movies didn't do well, to try and see, well, what can I... What kind of what and it looks like he's kind of checked off several different genres of like, oh, what can I what can I do next and what can I do now? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, and from what I hear about him, he's a very nice guy. He's very much, you know, it's a collaborative artwork. It's, you know, all about and he like tries to learn from his mistakes from previous movies. So, yeah, he's a very gifted and talented director and he does have a visual eye. And um, but maybe because this movie kind of just fluttered when it came out, maybe no one's going to demand David Fincher go and make Fight Club 2, even though there's a comic book of it. But I don't think David Fincher's going to go and do a Fight Club 2. Yeah, and and then it kind of gives I don't know what the second one's about, but if you know about the first, then what's the what's two going to give you? You know, from what I remember, it's um, whatever Edward Norton's character was. I can't even remember if he had a name. It may just be he didn't. But him and Marla become a married couple and they have a son. And things happen and Tyler Durden ends up coming back into their lives. Mm. Possibly, possibly. Uh, but, yeah, I didn't I didn't know Danny Boyle directed 127 hours. Yeah, this is his uh, immediate follow-up to winning the Oscar for uh, Slumdog Millionaire. Slumdog Millionaire, yeah, that's crazy. And then um, Steve Jobs? I don't know. That. Yes, yes. And um, it's actually a better movie than people remember. They should go back and rewatch it. It's really well done. Uh, it's, of course, written by Aaron Sorkin. Yeah. Uh, but, and they structure it by telling the story of Steve Jobs by three different launches. <laughs> We're talking about different Danny Boyle movies in the yeah, no, I review. Know. But uh, I believe the first segment shot in 16 millimeter, then the second is shot in 35, and then the last is digitally. And a lot of people, when it came out, were like, oh, but what would the... Because David Fincher was going to make this movie with Christian Bale as Steve Jobs. And I think a lot of people were just hung up on like, oh, what would the Fincher version be like? But uh, the Danny Boyle version's really good. And I think um, it would be a much different movie and probably wouldn't have the spin that Danny Boyle put on it. And yeah, I think a lot of people were just trying to compare it to... The social network because it's kind of similar to because uh, Aaron Sorkin wrote that script too. But 
It's a little bit different of a movie, and it's better than people think it is. Okay, and then quickly tell me about this one. Uh, never even heard of it. Millions. Oh, Millions. That's a really good, sweet movie. You can watch that right now on Disney+. Plus. So basically, Danny Boyle remade Shallow Grave as a children's film. And these... <sighs> These Which two little, person? yeah, these two little boys find like a bunch of cash just out on the side of this neighborhood they live in, and it's basically told from the youngest boy. They recently lost their mother. The little boy's obsessed with saints. He sees and talks to the saints, and it's all about like, what would you do with all this money? Would you help people, or would you try to spend spend it all? It's just a sweet movie, and. Danny Boyle trying something different. He's like, let me make a family film, which is yeah. the movie makes right after 28 days later. Oh, yeah, right. Uh, very cool. Uh, yeah. And now let's rate uh, T2 Train Spotting. Obviously, we both agree it's not as good as the first, um, but uh, it wasn't horrible and definitely worth the view. So, what are you rating it? I would give it a three and a half out of five. It's it's entertaining. The actors are all doing their job, especially Robert Carlyle. And it was nice to see uh, Danny Boyle and Ewan McGregor work together again. I hope they do it again. And speaking of uh, punk rock, I haven't watched it, but I know Danny Boyle was involved in a television series about the Sex Pistols. Oh, nice. Uh, very punk rock. Um yeah, so it sounds like we were both giving the same rating at a WT and a half, um, which is uh, what this is. I mean, it's it's very um, uh, accessible, something that uh, is easy to watch, especially if you've seen the first. I mean, you're not going to hate this film, but is it necessary? Probably not. But uh, it's definitely uh, something that's worth the view. I love Ewan McGregor. He's one of my all-time favorites. And, um, yeah, I had some laughs in here. Danny Boyle loves to to work with colors in interesting ways um, and not in all of his movies, but for sure in this one, I mean, at one point they're sitting in a car, one side of the car is red, the top is purple, the bottom is green and the right is orange. And it's like all these vibrant colors just in this little car scene. And I just thought it was super interesting because that, doesn't that's not anywhere i think (laughs) my favorite scene in the movie is where they try to scam all these guys that like are these people at this um what's like a vfw but i don't know what it is but it's like remembering like i guess 1690 or something it's the protestants and the catholics and they're like trying to um perform a song and then they don't know how it's gonna go but it does win the crowd over yeah that's pretty yeah. hilarious. Pretty good stuff. And again, they're scamming. They stole their credit cards and then went to the ATM, used the number of the 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 crew members that they're a part of to see if that was their ATM pen. And it turned out a lot of them was. And then right at midnight, they did it again. So they just took a bunch of money. Um, but uh, yeah, we both thought it was uh, at least enjoyable and a little bit fun. I definitely think the best scene is... Uh, is the scene with uh, the throw up just because I laugh so hard. But Danny Boyle has some really interesting um, uh, tricks with the camera. And um, yeah, I, I mean, he definitely made this interesting. It, it could have just been linear and it definitely wasn't. So he, he has, a, he has a, a good vision uh, when it comes to Yeah, he stuff, didn't so. phone it in, even though there was no reason for him to make this movie again, other yeah. than... He's like, oh, maybe I should revisit this because, you know, I did the first one and there's a book and maybe I can get you in and back and we'll be friends again. Yeah, it worked. We enjoyed it. And uh, go check it out now. Actually, it's on uh, Hulu and Sling TV and Roku and Amazon Prime and Philo and YouTube. So you can check that out. And while you're there on YouTube, go check out Cody. Cody, tell us where they can find you. Uh, you can find me uh, at Video Store Rejects on our Facebook page or YouTube page. That's the podcast. We do weekly chats about whatever movie we want to talk about. I also have a director series where we go through each director's film one movie at a time. Right now we're doing Jim Henson and Frank Oz, also Ron Howard. And then you can find me on Twitter at FilmNerd85 and also there at Letterboxd. 
Very nice. Yeah, 7.2 on IMDb for T2 train spotting. $18 million budget, worldwide gross, 41.6. So it did make its oh, money back. I, I wonder if most of that's from the European market. Uh, let's see. It says for the gross for US and Canada was 2.4. So, yep. I was fixing <laughs> to say, I don't even remember it really playing anywhere. I'm sure it played in the major cities. Yeah. But, like, and then it was like, it wasn't like you couldn't rent the DVD or Blu-ray from Redbox anywhere near me. Like the only way to watch it was like to buy it or to like digitally rent it. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, yeah, I was like, so I just never got around to watching it till now. And I actually found a used copy at a store and I was like, I'm just going to blind buy this just to see. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, 81% of Rotten Tomatoes, 78% audience score. Not bad. And uh, we enjoyed it as well. Go check out uh, Cody at all the places. Thanks for joining me, Cody. Thank you all for viewing. Check out T2 Train Spotting. It's worth the view, and we'll see you soon.